Good afternoon, friends. Thank you for being with us here today on this lovely sunny, getting much warmer Good Friday. Those of you who are here in person with us, it is so good to be together. Though those of you who are joining us online, thank you for being a part of this Good Friday service with us as well. If you were able to bring a copy of the worship guide with you, you will notice at the end of that that right after the after the benediction, there's no posting for that service. We're going to break down and we, we, we will finish. We're going to exit in silence, let a little bit of the meaning and the gravity of today just kind of sit with us for a bit. Today is a great day to make ourselves ready for Sunday. Today is a great day to remember the price that was paid for us, friends. Because Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live in righteousness. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross so that he might draw the whole world to himself. Grant that we, who glory in his death for our salvation, may also glory in his call to take up our cross and follow him. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 13 through chapter 53, verse 7. Under the title, The Suffering Servant. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high, just as there were many who were astonished at him. So marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals, so he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see, and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty, that we should look at him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hid their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account, Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. The words of the prophet given to us this day to remind us from whence we come. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. Will you pray with me? Holy God, your people are gathered in this sacred space and in the spaces that we've gathered to pray on this very holy day. Today is the day that we remember the way that you showed your love to us, the way that you proved your boundless love for us. So we lay down our burdens once again. We ask for forgiveness once again. We lay down our sins at the foot of the cross. We lay down we lay it all down. And we pray, Lord, that we would be your instruments, your instruments of peace, your instruments of mercy, your instruments of healing at work in this world. And in these moments of silence, we lift up our hearts to you once again. And we give you what is yours. We give you our hearts. We give you these silent cries. There's so much more on our hearts, Lord. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for loving us. In your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Friends, we're going to move on to sharing some of our gospel lessons today. We have many parts from the gospel according to John that we are going to share this day. They're verses that we tend to hear during this season, year in and year out. I ask you to hear them anew today. Hear them afresh today. Let, let the story wash over you in a new way this day. In between each of these readings, we're going to take just a small break, and Jeff is going to lead us in a verse of the hymn, Were You There? You can find that in your worship guide or in your hymnal, number 200 and 
888, feel free just to <coughs> sit back in between the readings and listen. If you're so moved, feel free to sing along as well. Friends, I just invite you to take this time, open, open your ears, open your mind, open your heart, friends, to what this God is trying to say to us this day. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you this about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born. And for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept 
coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him in the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. sat on the judge's bench at a place called the stone pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now, it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. <clears throat> he said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. And they handed him over to them to be crucified. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side. With Jesus between them, 
Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, which was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus was his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. After this, aware that everything was now finished in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now since it was the preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of the week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that the legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then the other, of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with the burial cloth, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day. For the tomb was close by.
is I invite you and I encourage you to fight the temptation to jump to Sunday. Fight the temptation to jump just to celebrating the resurrection. And spend some time today and this evening and tomorrow focusing just a little bit on the empty feeling that the disciples must have felt. On the empty feeling that the world surely felt. Use this time to grieve and to mourn as we should. Use this time to prepare and make ourselves ready for the celebration that Sunday brings. Do not skip the difficult. Do not skip the hard to read. Do not skip the work that needs done this day and tomorrow thing. Focus on the empty so that Sunday we can celebrate what it means to be filled anew with the light and the life that is Jesus Christ. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient, obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you now and forever.